Good morning. It's about 5.30 a.m. and I'm getting ready to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to paint. So, let me tell you where we're going with this. I'm going to be reviewing this Wagner Flexio 3000. It's a HVLP, HLVP, high volume, low pressure HVLP spray painter. It's a paint gun, basically, electric. And I'm going to be testing this today on my garage cabinets. Now, if you don't know me very well, um, let me just go ahead and enlighten you. I am not a painter by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I was just thinking about it today. I think I went through this exercise about 10 years ago. I was going to repaint the outside of the house, and I bought one of these uh, sprayers and was going to do it myself and went through all the masking and going through all that. I think I got the garage door painted and said hell with it and I just hired a painter to come finish the job. So it's not that I can't do it, I just it, it was just a lot of work. So Wagner claims that this is something that just anybody can do. You don't have to be a professional painter, you don't have to really know anything. We're going to put that to the test today. I want to thank Wagner for sending me this Flexio 3000. In fact, it's kind of a funny story. When I started renovating the garage, I was reaching out to people to partner with on this renovation project. And for some reason, I just had completely forgotten the fiasco of my 10-year-ago painting nightmare. In fact, I ended up selling that sprayer on Craigslist for half of what I paid for it just to get rid of it. And I guess I had just forgotten that experience, so I reached out to Wagner and damn! They responded and they sent me this Flexio 3000. I could have hired a painter to paint these cabinets for $600. So that's probably what I would have done. In fact, I know I would have done it if Wagner hadn't sent me this. But now I feel obligated to test it, review it, and tell you a little bit about it. Now, I'm not going to do a big, complete unboxing video of this spray painter or sprayer. Uh, because I just don't think that's necessary. There's a lot of those on YouTube. I've done a little research myself on YouTube of people that have tested this and used it and, and kind of reviewed it. So today, I'm just I'm going to open it up and, and show you kind of what comes in it, if I can figure out how to open the box. But I'm not going to go into great detail because I don't like to do unboxing videos. I think they're kind of stupid, really. Why does anybody want to watch somebody take something out of a box? But it does come in this kind of interesting little plastic carrying case. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's industrial. You're not going to want to throw this in the back of a pickup truck. But uh, for keeping the sprayer and all the contents around the house, it's probably good enough. Certainly nice if they give you a case. It's, you know, it's decent. So you get all the instructions. I'll go that. I think there's some filters in here from the videos I've seen. And uh, I'm going to go through that here in a little bit. Uh, you do get two spray guns in this kit. Now, one of these guns, I think, is for like your thicker materials like paints and primers. And the other gun is more for your uh, smaller detail projects, maybe even uh, stains, uh, things like that. So we'll be using the bigger gun today because what I've done is I've spent the last two days getting the garage prepared for this job. And that's where the work comes in. But I can tell you for a fact, it take, takes a lot of work to mask off the garage, get the cabinets masked off, had to pull all the drawers out, mask up the drawers, make sure the floor is protected. I just spent a great deal of money on this new floor with Garage Floors DFW that I love, by the way. And I'll, I'm going to do a video on that garage floor. But here is one of the spray guns. This is the one we'll be using today. Uh, there's another smaller spray gun here. That's the one I was telling you about earlier for the stains and the lighter projects. And then this is the kind of the, the turbine, the motor. Uh, this is what 
powers the that pushes the paint through the system and I'm gonna get this all set up I'm not gonna take my nice new camera out into the garage to videotape me with all this overspray going everywhere obviously I'll try to take some time to stop and explain what I'm doing if not I'll do voiceover and tell you a little bit about the you know how it went but let's give this thing a try I'm very apprehensive like I said I'm not a painter this is not my passion Let's get to the garage. Okay, I'm out here in the garage and I'm just uh, kind of laying out my plan for this paint project. And I'm just going to kind of show you what my plan is. Hopefully it works. I've kind of given this a little thought. Uh, as you can see, I've got stuff all over the garage. I got the garage floor papered off. This space right here, I'm going to have a folding table and I'm going to use that table to paint these four small square cabinet doors. These go up on the top of the cabinets. I'm going to start by priming them obviously, but I'm going to I'm going to prime the back side of them first because, you know, I'm trying to get used to this spray gun and how it works. So I didn't want to screw up the front of the cabinets until I practiced kind of on the back of the doors. And that's why all these doors on the floor are back side up. So I'm going to be uh, spraying the backs of everything first. Now, my plan is... Once I have this table set up here, I'll use one of these little totes, I guess you call them, your Sterlite containers. I'll set it on the table and those will fit on top, just like I have these. I have these on these little totes. You can see it rises them up off the ground. That way I can, I can spray the edge without the edge of the door sitting in paint. I wish I could raise them up about six feet. If I had sawhorses, I would use sawhorses, but I don't have any sawhorses, so I'm just gonna get down low and work on them there. Over here, I've got my tool chest. I've got it wrapped up with plastic. I brought in my big trash can because I know I'm gonna have uh, cardboard with wet paint. I'm gonna have gloves that need to be thrown away. I'm gonna have uh, my paper towels. I'm gonna have a lot of paper towels and and rags out here in case I need to wipe up spills or something. I'm just not sure what to expect yet. I've also got the paper down pretty much on the entire floor to protect the floor from overspray. Uh, this particular wall I'm not concerned about because I'm going to be painting it the dark gray anyway. I just assume some of this dark gray paint is going to lift uh, when I pull off the masking tape, so I know I'm going to have to probably touch up some of this dark gray. I'm not too concerned about that right now. So the goal is to get the primer on today. My understanding is this primer is a shellac based primer and it dries pretty quick. It should dry within an hour. I'm only going to do one coat of the primer on the backs of these doors. I may do two coats of the primer on the front of the doors. I'm not sure yet if I really need to. Well, this is after day one of my cabinet paint project. Let me walk you around <clears throat> and show you uh, what's been going on because yesterday was a nightmare, okay? But I'm not a painter, okay? I tried this before 10 years ago and I ended up hiring a guy to do it. Now I remember why. But it, like pregnancy, you forget the pain and you keep thinking you wanna do it again. Uh, anyway, let me show you where we're at. So what I did is I used this table here to spray all of my smaller, these little doors and the drawers over here, the facings on the drawers, you can see there's overspray everywhere. This spray gun eats paint. I mean, it just, of course, there's so much overspray, you waste a lot. Actually, this is primer. These are just now primed. They're not painted yet. 
Here are the, uh, you know, the cabinets themselves. Uh, there is some overspray on the walls, but that's not a problem. I, you know, it's easy to touch up. I've got extra gray paint to touch up if I need to, no problem there. I wasn't too worried about that. I kind of figured that was going to happen. But I uh, got my cabinets facings primed. Everything's primed. The problem is the primer is very rough. It, uh, it has a very rough surface to it. So before I paint, this all has to be sanded down. And of course, I painted these on both sides or I primed them on both sides. The gun is a little hard to figure out. It worked okay, I guess. Uh, I ended up having to go back to Home Depot to buy some more uh, primer. Uh, I've already spent more on materials uh, than what it would have cost me to hire the guy to paint them professionally. <laughs> so, uh, as is often the case, I went ahead and bought a couple of saw horses because I needed to get everything up off the ground. This is how I was painting them yesterday. And the problem is you get a lot of dust and a lot of overspray. And if you go to spray again, that kicks this, this uh, sprayer, it puts out so much air, it starts kicking all that up. So I had to get sawhorses to uh, get everything up off the ground. So when I finish my painting today, my plan right now, I've, here's my issue. I've only got one day to finish this because the temperatures are gonna start dropping again. And I really need to be painting in 50 degrees or above, and it's gonna be 65 today. So my goal is to go ahead and sand these down out in the driveway, and then I'm gonna try putting a coat of the paint on and see how it looks using the sprayer. If it doesn't come out smooth like I'm hoping for, because the primer did not, I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a nature of the primer or if that's the nature of that spray gun, but it's real rough. It's not smooth at all. So I'm gonna spray one door, one of the small ones, and I'm gonna see how it looks. And then I'll decide if I'm gonna continue on with this sprayer. I also need to fill a couple of little cracks here with wood filler. So that's where we are right now. Um, I'm hoping to get, I think what I'm just gonna do is leave the inside of the doors primed and just paint the outside because it takes the paint four hours to dry. So I'm not gonna have enough time to paint, let it dry, flip them over, paint the other side. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the face of the doors, the front, and have those ready to go I can then move everything back over to this side of the garage so I can pull my car in because I'm having to leave it out in the driveway right now. And that's kind of where we are right now. I will update you tonight to let you know how this project is proceeding. I don't know what to say. I, I know there's a lot of you out there that for some reason you think I can do anything. Um, but this painting the cabinet thing, it just, it kicked my ass. No kidding. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I want to, I want to thank Wagner painting for sending me this Flexio 3000. Uh, you know, it's very generous of them to do that, but they sent it to me to do, to do a review, and everybody understands uh, when they send me a product to review that I'm going to give an honest review. That's just, that's just the way I do things. And I got to tell you, uh, it just didn't work for me. Uh, this is the, I don't know, what is this, day three, day four? I don't even remember. I've lost count. I've... It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. And um, just let me give you a little wrap up and tell you kind of my thoughts on the project. I tried to give you a little video before, a little video, video during and along the process. I couldn't really videotape what I was doing because there was so much overspray in the garage. Um, it would have gotten on the camera or my cell phone or whatever. I just didn't want to run that risk. So... You're just going to have to take my word for it. But 
I was painting my new cabinets that were installed just a couple weeks ago and the project involved first I had to prime the cabinets and so I used a special primer for that and that went pretty well. That was kind of the first day of painting. Now, before I even started spraying, uh, it took me almost two days just to get everything masked off, get the floor covered, drop cloths. It's just, it's, it's a fair amount of work. As any of you who have painted, uh, you know what I'm talking about. So I then uh, sprayed the... Uh, primer and it seemed to go on pretty good pretty well I uh, after it dried and it dries pretty quick I noticed the surface though was very rough uh, it wasn't smooth at all so that all had to be sanded down and once you sanded it down uh, which took a lot of work that took several hours just to sand because I have four large doors and four small doors plus I have six drawers all of this was taken out all the hardware removed and plus the cabinet itself that all this goes in so I had to sand all that down and it came out smooth you could tell that the the substrate was good enough to where if the paint went on smooth uh, it would look good it would be a good smooth sprayed professional looking surface so then, uh, the day of painting, applying the paint. First of all, I spent all morning sanding, which is extremely messy. I had to do it out of my driveway because it's very dusty, obviously. And, uh, and in between all of this, I'm going back and forth to the Home Depot because I didn't have enough primer, so I had to go buy more primer. And then I need sandpaper, and I have to go buy sandpaper, and it's, that's a 15-minute drive each way. So it's frustrating, you're dirty, you're messy. You'll notice I've got a brand new Cruise Man's garage cap on. That's because my other cap is literally destroyed. It's just covered with paint. Everything's covered with paint. And except for the cabinets. So I, I go to spray the paint and I do everything the manual said. I made sure to clean it good after the primer. Uh, Per the instructions, I put the paint in, which is a latex, it's a urethane paint, and the paint can says do not thin it, and the manual says you don't have to thin the paint. I tried every airflow, motor flow, whatever their different flows are called, I tried every setting I could, and I could not get the paint to come out smooth. It just, it was like it was just spitting out splotches of paint everywhere. I came in here after, now what I did do, I was smart enough, I wanted to test the paint on one of the small doors. Uh, and I just tested it on one first. I wanted to test it, watch it dry, see how it was going to look before I finished everything. At least I didn't screw up and paint everything. But I could tell it was coming out very splotchy. I came in here and I look at the manual and I'm this is where I had kept the manual and all the container and I'm reading what am I doing wrong I'm trying to figure this out well as I'm reading the manual and as I'm you know studying this I, I I'm hearing some some water running right outside the window of the studio and you know I was so into the paint job I didn't really pay that much attention to it. I thought, well, maybe the neighbor's swimming pool, maybe it's their, maybe they have a fountain, uh, or maybe a sprinkler head broke. I don't know. We don't have any running water outside the, the uh, studio here. So I just kind of ignored it. That was probably one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon. So I went on about my business, continuing to try. I tried thinning the paint. I tried different settings. Could not get it to come out smooth. So at that point, I had to make an executive decision. Uh, I'm done. You know, I don't have another three or four days to spend on this because the weather's changing. It's going to get colder. You have to spray when it's 50 to 90 degrees. And we had two beautiful days in a row, so I figured I could get this thing done in two days. I didn't. So it was just a major fail for me. This tool 
in the right hands. Obviously, somebody smarter or more talented than I am. Uh, obviously, it can do, supposedly, it can do a good job. I see good reviews on YouTube. Um, maybe they got free sprayers and they felt obligated to give a good review. I don't know. But all I can tell you is it didn't work for me. This was a major fail. If any of you out there are looking for a Flexio 3000 and you want to pay the shipping, I'll be glad to ship you this one. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, let me get back to this water running issue. So I come in back, I come back in here last night after I'm cleaning up and everything, and it's about eight o'clock at night, and I can still hear this damn water running outside. And I'm thinking, what is that? So I go out in the dark with a flashlight, have to go into my side yard, and I see water pouring out one of these drain pipes coming out of the brick wall. And I know what it is. It's the water heater overflow. We have water heaters in our attic. Yes, I know it's insane. Why the hell would anybody build a home with a water heater in the attic, but we have two water heaters in the attic, so I knew exactly what was happening. So even though I'm exhausted from a day of trying to paint, and my back, by the way, is killing me because I've been bending over all day long. I know, it's a hard luck story, you know. So I go up in the attic, and sure enough, the drain pan is full of water. It's pouring out through that thing, so I'm able to shut off the water, shut off the gas. Got the plumber come out today, did some shopping on, you know, through some contacts. We're talking $4,500 for two water heaters in the attic. Now, I replaced these. They're only seven years old. I replaced both of these water heaters seven years ago for about $1,500, $1,600. That's how much this has all gone up in that amount of time. This is what we call the American dream, the joy of home ownership. I just replaced a $6,000 air conditioner in July and an $8,000 one two years ago. So I don't know about the American dream for you, but this is a money pit. Not to mention all the money I just spent fixing up the garage and the cabinets and everything else. So I wasn't looking forward to spending another $4,500 on water heaters. Long story short, let me get back to the Wagner review. Um, first of all, when you fill this thing up with paint, it's pretty heavy. You also have the cord to contend with because you've got to have an extension cord, obviously. So you always have to make sure you're not, and it's harder to paint cabinets than it would be a wall. If you're just wanting to paint a sheetrock wall, uh, something like that, a big flat surface, this would be much easier. But when you're having to paint doors and cabinets and you've got all these small pieces and you've got to have a place to put all this stuff. And you've got to worry about dragging the cord over wet paint or knocking something over. I mean, it's, it's just a pain in the ass. So uh, it kicked my ass. Uh, I, I couldn't get it done. So I'll just leave it to you. For me, it was a fail. Uh, you know, I'm sure they make a good product. A lot of other people say it's a good deal. A lot of other people seem to have success with it. Maybe I'm just not a painter. So Sunday, this coming Sunday, I've got a painter coming out to see if they can take up where I've left off and finish the job. Basically, they're just going to be able to spray the top coat. I've already got everything masked off. I've already got everything primed and sanded. It's ready to paint. I just don't have a sprayer that works with a shit. So anyway, um, I could have originally, when I bought the cabinets, I could have had them painted for $600. I've well spent more than $600. I, I, I could have easily saved money just having the guy paint them professionally. I'm into this probably six or seven hundred dollars right now on supplies. That's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you make a decision on what you're going to do in the future if you decide to do a painting project. I'm getting back to motorcycles, something I know a little bit about. Okay, so thanks for watching this today. I hope you got some benefit from it. 
I look forward to hearing your comments. I love it if you give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down. I don't care. And, uh, you know, appreciate you joining me today. Let's uh, get back to motorcycles. With God is my witness, I will never paint again. <laughs>